installation of the Charters of Freedom here at Fort Harrison State Park. Thank you for joining us. Let us begin our dedication by standing for the invocation offered by State Park's Deputy Director Ginger Murphy. Please remain standing for the posting of the colors by DNR's Indiana Conservation Officers Honor Guard, the singing of our national anthem by Skylar Green, daughter of South Region Manager Lucas Green and his wife Amanda, and the Pledge of Allegiance led by State Park's Deputy Directors Brock Bauman and Dale Breyer. Let's pray. Dear God, as we gather today to dedicate and unveil this installation of the Charters of Freedom, we are so grateful for our country's founding leaders who penned these documents. We're thankful that they envisioned a nation formed as a more perfect union and all that entails for themselves and for all of us who have followed in their footsteps. We honor their courage and their sacrifices. We're also grateful that for those who planned for and brought this installation to us here at Fort Harrison State Park to remind us that freedom for all is at the heart of who we are as a nation. And we ask your blessings on all who are here today to participate in this event and on all those who may visit this site in the future. May we be inspired to engage in public service and government and may we practice leadership in our communities, our states, our country, and our world. May we have the courage to honor the spirit of the original Charters of Freedom today and in the days and years to come. Amen.
and the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. special guests that are with us here today, but let me introduce and recognize just a few individuals. Senator Kyle Walker, if you, if you would, if you'd raise your hand or stand quickly, we recognize you. Mayor Steve Collier, City of Lawrence, our friend and neighbor. Cabinet Secretary, DNR Director, Dan Porter. DNR Chief of Staff, Mike Smith. DNR Deputy Directors, Chris Smith with his land and water, and Ryan Miller, Regulatory Services. DNR General Counsel, David Bossman. DNR Legislative Director, Caitlin Smith. DNR Division Directors, Division of Law Enforcement Director, Colonel Steve Hunter. Division of Nature Preserves Director, Ron Hoff, uh, um, Helmick. Uh, Division of Engineering, Interim Director Dean Ellingsworth. Uh, DNR staff from a number of divisions, uh, State Parks, Law Enforcement, Historic Preservation and Archaeology, and Engineering, kind of give, a, give, you a, give a wave if you're here. Thanks for your help. And any DNR retirees? There's a few of you out there, I see. With great pleasure, Foundation Forward Founders, Vance and Mary Jo Patterson. Foundation Forward staff and guests. Away. Don't see any members of the Natural Resources Commission with us. Um, members of the Indiana Natural Resources Foundation and Executive Director Jody Kress. Indiana Parks Alliance members Tom Homer, John Bergman, John McCone. Thanks for being here. Members of Friends of Fort Harrison State Park. Thank you. Indiana State Park volunteers. I want to extend my thanks to all the DNR staff who have been a part of preparing for installation and for today's, for today's most special event. From our leadership team to landscape planners, Historic preservation staff and property staff, we have all worked together with Foundation Forward and with the contractor, CNHM, excavating through perhaps one of the most challenging times in our nation's history. Thank you all. I am very honored to introduce our next speaker. He was appointed by Governor Eric J. Holcomb to head the agency in July 2020. Prior to his appointment, he served as the director of the Neon State Parks for more than 15 years, leaving as the third highest tenured state parks director in the country. And he was the president of the National Association of State Parks Directors when he was appointed. Please welcome Cabinet Secretary Dan Bortner in our box. Thank you all for joining us today. We are so very appreciative that Foundation Forward and its creators, Vance and Mary Jo Patterson, along with their team, brought this opportunity to us. We're honored to be a host site for this installation that replicates the Charters of Freedom, three foundational documents that have been so important to our country. The Declaration of Independence was written in 1776 to tell the world that in these united colonies, we believe individuals are born with certain unalienable rights. Among those are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The Declaration also stated in clear language that it is the right of citizens to choose their own government. Twelve years later, in 1787, the United States Constitution was penned. After freedom from Great Britain was established, a charter to define how the government of this new experiment would be structured was necessary. 
Once completed, the Constitution became the map by which a new nation would forever ensure that freedom's light would never fade. The Honorable Sandra Day O'Connor, Associate Justice of the Supreme Court, once said in referring to the Constitution, it is quite simply the most powerful vision of freedom ever expressed. In 1789, 12 amendments to the Constitution were approved by Congress, and by December of 1791, Articles 3 through 12, a total of 10 amendments, were ratified by the required number of states and became known as the Bill of Rights. Now, it's important to point out, these amendments were ratified by states, not by colonies. We had just become a united nation for the first time, and the seed of democracy had been planted. The original charters of freedom are located in the National Archives in Washington, D.C. It is fitting that this installation stands in front of the garrison, which is part of the Fort Harrison Inn and Conference Center here at Fort Harrison State Park. Both facilities and all the buildings you see around you here, plus many inside the park, were once a part of the Fort Benjamin Harrison Army Base, which operated here from 1906 to 1991. The park's history is a place where men and women were trained to serve this country and defend the principles highlighted in these three foundational documents make Fort Harrison State Park a perfect fist fit for us to carve out a special place to honor this nation and its ideals. It also serves as a reminder that freedom is never free and it must be diligently protected in order to survive. The park's location in central Indiana and in this urban setting make the text of these three important documents highly accessible to the local community, visitors to Lawrence and to city of Indianapolis, the many school and scout groups we work with, and of course for all our park guests. It is my sincere hope that Hoosiers and our guests will come here to reflect and to re-energize their commitment to the ideals set forth in these replicas of our nation's sacred documents. Although the content of these documents does not speak directly to conservation or of our natural resources or to preserving our history, both of which are at the heart of what we do here in the Indiana Park of Natural Resources, and of course our other amazing state parks, the laws that guided the creation of these special places and how we use, conserve, fund, interpret, and protect them sprung forward from the framework created by these documents, and thus they're important to us as an agency. Our Indiana State Parks founder, Colonel Richard Lieber, who not only saw the value of conserving natural resources and introducing Hoosiers to those resources, believed in the importance of sharing our nation's as well as our state's histories. He once said, this then is the value of our public estate, that we have set aside forever a part of the original domain, that by leaving it in its natural condition, we have made the past intelligible to our and coming generations, that we have attracted visitors from other states and shown them the beauty of our own, that we have found a measure of appreciation for the good of our day and an offset in part for some of its evils, that we have strengthened citizenship and helped create that appreciation of the soil which cannot but increase our attachment to our own state and to the nation. That we have tried in our state to educate the masses of our people to look upon conservation not merely as a means of self-preservation, a practical conserving of our resources, but also as a need for the appreciation and uplift for the soul of man. Colonel Lieber would be glad to see this installation, and so are we. Governor Eric Holcomb is also glad to see the Charters of Freedom installed here, and although he couldn't make it to be with us in person today, I would like to share the letter he sent and ask me to read on his behalf. Greetings. It is a pleasure to welcome you to the dedication of the Charters of Freedom exhibit here at Fort Harrison State Park. You are here because you recognize the important role that historical documents play in making our country. As a history buff and collector of presidential signatures, I appreciate and share the sentiment of Foundation Forward and that our nation's most coveted works create an unmatched electric energy. Today affords an opportunity to take a breathtaking look through the windows of time as the Indiana Department of Natural Resources joins Foundation Forward to bring you replicas of three key historical documents. On display will be the U.S. Declaration of Independence, the U.S. Constitution, and the U.S. Bill of Rights. Let us take a moment to thank those who made this exhibit possible today. Through the insight that comes with the knowledge of history, I know, we'll be, I know we will continue to take Indiana to the next level. Together, let us write a chapter that leaves our state brighter for future generations to come. Sincerely, Eric J. Holcomb, Governor of the State of Indiana. On behalf of Governor Holcomb and the entire staff of the Indiana Department of Natural Resources, I once again offer our gratitude for all who helped to make this special place a reality. 
thank you, and may God continue to bless work done. Bless the work that's done here. Thank you. Director, I uh, appreciate those comments as we all do, and you managed to get the trash dumped at the same time. So thanks so much. <laughs> Nothing like timing. <laughs> I've been looking forward to introducing the ne this next speaker for many, many months. We have endured numerous setbacks as a result of the pandemic, from labor shortages to supply chain issues. However, throughout the project, he has been inspirational in keeping things moving ever forward, bringing the project to fruition today. Please welcome Foundation Forward Director of Communications, Mike Unruh. Mike. Good morning. Thank you everyone for being here today. It is my job to introduce our team from Foundation Forward. We have a few members of our team who are not here today, <clears throat> Excuse me, but I would like to mention them. Our facilitator, Ron Lewis, our education director, Dr. David Streeter, and our construction manager, Don Ramsey, are working on other projects across the country as we speak. With us today, we have our office manager, and head of our table back in, in the back, Connie Snyder. She's waving her hand back there. All right. If you will see Connie uh, sometime during the ceremony, there are lists back there where you can sign your name for everyone in attendance, and your names will be included in the time capsule. They will go into the setting. Vance will tell you a little bit more about that later on. We also have our operations manager, Perry Snyder will be in charge of our cannoneers toward the end of the event as well. I'm Mike Unruh, the communications director. If you have pictures or video from today's event that you would like to share, please see me after the event. Connie and I together also handle fundraising for the organization. You can see in front of the setting, oh sorry, you can see in front of the setting here that we have what we call our field of honor. It's an area of legacy papers on the ground and these can actually be purchased for a donation of $100 to the larger sizes are $300, $350. And you can get your name, the name of your organization, business name engraved on those to become a permanent part of the setting. If you want to uh, see Connie after the event, she can get your information and we can get those taken care of for you. Also, yes. we. We have larger donors uh, that will be on a donor's plaque, which will be installed at a later date, along with the installation of the time capsule. And so if you're interested in being a permanent donor on the donor's plaque, which will be part of the setting itself, we can give you information on that as well. So once again, after the ceremony, please see myself or Connie in the back. We, all, we have our founders today, Mary Jo Patterson, and it is my pleasure to introduce our next speaker and another one of our founders, Mr. Vance Patterson. Some crazy technical stuff going on today. <laughs> Must be Indiana. <laughs> I am so proud of you all for making the effort to be here today to dedicate your charters of freedom set because it's going to be here for the next 300 or 500 years and your future generations are going to know that you were here. My question is, are you ready to be a part of history? My name is Vance Patterson. Uh, Mary Jo and I are from Burke County. That's in western North Carolina, about halfway between Hickory and Asheville. I'm going to turn this off. Let's back it up. Because I don't know if I can. Uh, about halfway between Hickory and Asheville. Mary Jo is the uh, grandmother of 11 children, grandchildren, and we've got our 12th coming in January. I'm a businessman. I have a company that makes industrial fans. We actually make things out of metal, ship them across the country and around the world. I'm a very proud American manufacturer. 
I'm going to tell you a little about the inspiration behind the foundation that has brought you these charters of freedom. I'm going to tell you a little about the setting, and then I'm going to give you a challenge to take with you. About 10 years ago, Mary Jo and I were up in Washington, D.C., and we decided to go to the National Archives because we'd never seen the original documents of uh, the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. We found ourselves wandering down these hallways looking at different displays, and then it opened up into this large room. We watched walk through these big bronze gates into this rotunda, and there were the founding documents on the other side. They're in chronological order. The Declaration of Independence is on the left, four pages of the Constitution in the middle, and the Bill of Rights on the right. This is when we learned that these are known as the Charters of Freedom. Now one of the things I liked was, once you got in the rotunda, there weren't any lines. You just wander around looking at different exhibits, and when you get a chance, you step up and look at the founding documents. And I'll never forget my feeling the first time I saw the Declaration of Independence, something our founding fathers had actually penned. And they looked down and saw their signatures, Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, Rutledge, Wilson, and the others. I just got goosebumps. And then when I got a chance, we moved over and looked at the first page of the U.S. Constitution. And those three words, we the people. I actually got a lump in my throat. I looked over and Mary Jo's wiped her tears out of her eyes. It was really an emotional experience for us. Well, the following year, back in Burke County, I got to thinking about that feeling, that experience, and the thought came to me, what if I could bring that experience back to the citizens of Burke County? I told Mary Jo about the idea, and she liked it, so we started working on a project. And the scope of the project was to design and build a replica of the Charters of Freedom as displayed in the rotunda. We wanted to put it in a central location in Burke County. It had to have high visibility, high foot traffic, and easy access for school children and veterans. Well, it took over two years to get this done, even though it was a gift from Mary Jo and I to the county. But after a late night joint session of the Burke County Commissioners and the City of Morganton City Council, they agreed on a location for it and gave us a site to put the setting. Well, there was something we hadn't told anybody, and that is that there are no prints, no drawings, no measurements, no dimensions, nothing available to the public about those settings up in Washington. And we'd only seen these documents once. So the next morning, after that late night meeting, we got up, got in the car, drove back up to Washington, walked into the rotunda. And now they won't let you take out a tape measure and start measuring a national treasure. But we had a plan. Mary Jo went one way, and I went another. And I stepped up in front of the uh, Constitution, and I did this. <laughs> and I was standing in the middle. So I knew it was about 12 feet long. Mary Jo is actually walking up to the other settings, turning around, facing the audience, and marking on her body the different elevations. And then we left. We did our drawings and, and came up with our design. So I tell people, while your setting here may not be exactly what's in the Washington, keep in mind it's based on two paces of a short guy and three marks on my wife's body. <laughs> we do have our ways. Well, on July 2nd, 2014, we dedicated the first Charters of Freedom setting outside of Washington, D.C., in downtown Morganton, on the old Burke County Courthouse Green. This gift was so well received, and we enjoyed it so much, we decided to do another one. And we did it in the town of Murphy, in Cherokee County, as far west in North Carolina as you can go. The third one went downtown Asheville in Buncombe County. Now, during this time, we decided to set up a foundation, a 501c3, because we knew we were going to be doing more. Real quickly, the principles of Foundation 4 are number one, education. Education to preserve American history and to teach civics, to teach how our government is meant to work, to serve and protect the people. Number two is access. You see, not everybody can get to Washington, D.C. to see the original documents. It took Mary Jo and I over 60 years to get there the first time. We want to provide access to these documents in local communities in a proper setting. And number three is community. Having your charters of freedom here in Lawrence, in the state of Indiana, 
gives you a place to gather, to celebrate, to honor, and to reflect. Now let me tell you a little about your setting here. But first, some history. This setting took over six years to get done. I started talking to Governor Pence's office back in August of 2015. In January of 16, I met with Mike Pence's chief of staff, Jim Adderholt. He said the governor was very much in favor of the project, and he put uh, General Goodwin in charge of it to get it done. Well, as it turned out, uh, the city of Indianapolis, uh, the city of Parks and Commissions, uh, Parks and uh, Recreation, the historical groups, the, the uh, education groups, nobody could find 240 square feet of grass and concrete to donate for the setting. So it sat on the table. Governor Pence moved on to uh, vice president, and the project is set there. In uh, August of 2019, I started working with uh, uh, Elaine Beadle, and she put me in touch with the De Indiana Department of Natural Resources, and they stepped up and said they would be thrilled to have it on one of their properties. And they gave us a number of sites. The one we picked out here was at the garrison and it is just a beautiful setting you wouldn't have believed what this looked like before they did the work here they prepared this setting so way to go uh, department of natural resources and indiana state parks very proud of you. one of the things i learned in life growing up was that if you want a monument or a setting to last you put more underground than above ground your foundation here goes down three and a half feet. It's solid, reinforced poured concrete coming up into a solid core. Just the centerpiece, the foundation, the core weighs over 38,000 pounds, over 19 tons. As you can see, it is then in, in, uh, covered with four inches of brick and mortar. There are six documents displayed. A little education here. Each one is life size, which means the dedication. The Declaration of Independence is a little bit larger than the others. Also, as you heard or surmised, there is no historic document known as the Bill of Rights. What's on display here and also up in Washington are the first proposed 12 amendments signed by John Adams, President of the Senate. There's a medallion on the front, similar to the one on here where you can see it. Uh, this is very special. We commissioned artists across the country to come up with this design. The eagle represents the Declaration of Independence. Proud, bold, defiant. There are seven stars above the eagle, which stand for the seven articles of the United States Constitution. And there are ten stars under the eagle, which stand for your first ten amendments, your Bill of Rights. Mike mentioned that there is a vault in the back of the centerpiece. In that vault will be a time capsule, and I'll tell a little more about it later. To date, we have dedicated and gifted 38 Charters of Freedom settings across the country. In North Carolina, South Carolina, Kentucky, or not Kentucky, yes, Kentucky, Kentucky, Indiana, Illinois, Nebraska, Virginia, Alabama, and as far west as Carson City, Nevada, and as far north as Wasilla, Alaska, just outside of Anchorage. We dedicated that one three weeks ago, and it was an amazing dedication. It was a gift to the state of Alaska, and the governor flew in from Juneau to give a nice speech, a heartfelt speech, on what the documents meant to him and to the education system. Governor Dull, Dull Vaney is six foot seven inches tall, and it was quite an experience for a guy like me to stand there and shake hands with him. He was, and he's really a nice guy. Your setting here is the 39th, and actually it's the fifth one in the state of Indiana. That makes Indiana have more charges of freedom setting than any other state except for North Carolina. So way to go, Indiana. <laughs> yeah. All right, people ask us, why are we doing this? And we tell them, yes, it's very expensive, but we believe it's more important than money. We believe it gives us a direct link to our founding fathers by helping to preserve what it is they gave this country a government to serve and protect we the people federal state and local serve and protect we learned that we had four founding fathers of education 
Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, and James Madison. They believe that in order to have a free and independent country, you must understand how government works, that you cannot control what you do not understand. Thomas Jefferson in 1787 said, educate and inform the whole mass of the people. They are the only sure reliance for the preservation of our liberty. And James Madison, a five foot four inch virtual rock star in his era, wrote in 1822, a people who mean to be their own governors must arm themselves with the power knowledge gives. You wouldn't believe how many people come up to us while we're building this, these settings and say, that's it, just four pages to the Constitution. And we say, that's it. All of our laws and our government are based on those four pages. You wouldn't believe how many people don't know that the first ten amendments are the Bill of Rights. I guarantee there are people here today learning that. You see, education. Now you probably noticed, I haven't been calling this a monument. The definition of a monument is a memorial to honor a person or an event. This is not a memorial. This is an active, hands-on educational supplement for your school's curriculum. Imagine if you will, teachers bring their third, fourth, and fifth grade classes down here to your charters of freedom. And while they're here, they'll learn a little about our founding fathers, a little about the history surrounding the era and founding of our country, They'll learn about federal government, they'll learn about state government, and local government, and local heroes. This is already happening across the country in communities that have their own Charters of Freedom settings. School buses pull up to these sites, kids come out and they love these annual field trips, the actual hands-on education. There are 3,142 counties, boroughs, parishes, independent cities, census zones, and the District of Columbia. United States. Our long-term goal is to place a Charters of Freedom setting in as many of those communities as possible over the next 10 years. Our hope is that our future leaders will come from these communities that have their own Charters of Freedom setting. That the children will grow up no longer just talking about the Constitution and Bill of Rights in Washington. They'll be talking about their Constitution and their Bill of Rights, the ones they grew up with right here in Indiana. Now, I said earlier, I was going to give you a challenge to take with you. Our founding fathers were challenged by the greatest power on earth at the time, the British Empire. They protested. They revolted. They fought a war and won a war, all the while setting up a government that is still in effect over 230 years later and replicated by over 65% of the countries around the world. They met their challenge. Terry Coleman, Dan Bordner, and Ginger Murphy were challenged with bringing a Charters of Freedom setting here to the garrison. As of today, they have met their challenge. Your challenge actually began about six years ago. We had just finished dedicating a Charters of Freedom setting at Hanover College in Hanover, Indiana. And Mary Jo and I were getting ready to leave, and I looked across the campus center, and there was a guy, a guy named Ron Wells, African-American facilities engineer would help me a lot during the dedication. I said, I got to go thank this guy again. So I walked over and I'm shaking Ron's hand. I said, thanks again for all the help you gave me setting up this dedication. And he said, thank you for giving this community this, this gift. And I said, what I usually say is something like, oh, you're welcome. Please make sure they use it after we leave. And he said, Mr. Patterson, I've already done that. He said, I brought my son over last night. And we had the talk. And I said, Ron, that means more to me than anything anybody's ever said after a dedication. Way to go. So here's your challenge. You bring your niece, your nephew, your son, your daughter, your grandchildren down here to your charters of freedom. And you have the talk like Ron Wells did. You tell them about their, about their freedoms and their rights and how those freedoms give them an advantage over the rest of the world to pursue their passion, to chase their dreams, to accomplish their goals and get out of life what they want to get out of life. You do that. Mary Jo and I and all Foundation Forward, as far as this gift is concerned, we'll call it even. Thank you. Joe? I don't know why I didn't write my wife's name down. <laughs> <laughs> 
I hear about that later on. <laughs> The Charters of Freedom setting, located at 6002 North Post Road, Indianapolis, Indiana, is hereby gifted from Foundation Forward Incorporated of Burke County, North Carolina, to the children, veterans, and citizens of Indianapolis and the state of Indiana. All rights, responsibilities, and care for this setting, displaying the Declaration of Independence, the United States Constitution, and the Bill of Rights, are hereby transferred to Fort Garrison, state of Indiana, on this day, October 15th, 2021. Well, Nancy, Mary Jo, I mean, how, how do you say thank you for this? Uh, you know, when we first sat down and we talked about this, there, there had to be a way to get it done. And as Director Coleman mentioned and, and the other folks too, it wasn't always easy, but when they take the sheets off this stuff after a while, mission accomplished. We, we've got it done. But as they said, it's just the beginning. Now you've got to utilize it. Now you've got to use it. Now look out through here today, and I see the children that are here. They'll remember this day. They always do. In Indiana State Parks, we always talk about we're in the memory-making business. That's what this is about. So Vance and Mary Jo, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We appreciate it. more things that will happen pretty quickly here. Uh, number one is about the time capsule. In the back of the center setting is a vault, and that vault will be a time capsule. Now, in the time capsule, we're going to put memorabilia of this era. We're going to put letters from foundation, from the parks department, or, uh, from law enforcement, from uh, military, from education people. And then we're going to seal that vault up. We're not going to do it today, obviously. We're going to seal that vault up and not open it until September 17th, 2087, which is the 300th anniversary of the United States Constitution. All vaults in the country will be open the same day. Nobody reads the letters, so we don't know what's going to be in any of them, so it ought to be pretty interesting what we read. Now, if you're here on that date, 2087, and there's a problem opening the vault, we gave the combination to Dan Bork. <laughs> he had it last. <laughs> All right, now we're going to do a cannon salute. So if all the cannoneers will report over there, as they are, uh, when these cannons go off, please hold your ears. Uh, they can be very loud. I knew, i got to tell you a story first <laughs> while they're getting ready. Uh, I knew during my first dedication I wanted to do a uh, cannon salute. But I knew 21 wasn't the proper number. So I did some research, and I learned that the cannon salute started uh, back in the 1600s on a ship pulling into port would uh, turn its guns to sea and discharge seven rounds. This showed at the port that they meant no threat. Well, the port, having more cannon and more, more powder, would answer three in kind. And so that's where a 21 gun would come from. Well, again, I knew that wasn't right. And I remembered I've done business up in Scotland. And while up in Edinburgh, they told me the story how the Scottish liked the way the British marked the time of day at noon. They would fire 12 rounds so the ship's captains and shopkeepers could set their clocks. Well, the Scottish, being Scottish, and that is my heritage, reason why fire 12 rounds at noon when they could wait one hour and save 11 rounds. <laughs> so every day there is a howitzer in the old fort in Edinburgh up on the hill, and that howitzer goes off at 1 o'clock. So I knew my number was somewhere between 1 and 21, and I decided on 7, partly because of the history and also because there are seven articles in the United States Constitution. We are going to fire one round for each article in the United States Constitution. My drummer today is Fran Wyatt, over here. Uh, please watch your ears over there, Fran, if you can. All right, drum roll, please. Article 1 defines the legislative branch to the House of Representatives and the Senate. It describes their powers and responsibilities. Article 2 defines the executive branch, the qualifications of the President and Vice President, power, responsibilities, and approval from law.
number five outlines the process of amending the United States Constitution. Article six sets the status of the United States Constitution as the supreme law of the land to which all leaders, including the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary, must be loyal. Addresses the ratification and declares that the United States Constitution should take effect. Nine, 13 states ratified. Children, veterans, and all citizens of the state of Indiana, I give you your charters of freedom.